Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem, baby. We got a lot of stuff in the news today. As always, the good stuff bikers do. Lots of toy runs going to be talked about, as well as a member of a club that just got over COVID. He got a motorcycle club escort home. Good stuff. Also, the trial in, with the Pagans with uh, the alleged beating of one man uh, that's coming up as well. They called it outlaw justice and then sad state of affairs, sad state of affairs. Uh, the outlaws MC nation lost one of their own. Uh, Roy Mason Jr. will cover that story as well. Say uh, it, motorcycle accidents, man. And then of course we got the wall of shame coming up. And remember, the second half of the show is always on the podcast platform, iTunes, everywhere. Major, it's there. So, And then, of course, Morning Hoot right after this one. So let's get into some news. After four months in multiple hospitals, including 45 days in a medically induced coma, Perry Allen is out. <laughs> Fellow members of the Warrior Riders Motorcycle Club were waiting outside Medical City Arlington for the man they call Happy. Then they gave him a motorcycle escort back to his home in Midlothian. Perry was diagnosed with COVID-19 in August. He spent time in three other hospitals and was intubated and placed in a medically induced coma for 45 days before he was transferred to Medical City Arlington. He spent two weeks learning to eat, breathe, and walk again. The Army veteran says when he arrived at Medical City Arlington, he couldn't get out of bed. Now he's walking through the hallways. Katie Johnston for CBSN DFW. We're here doing this Anderson Toy Parade. We've been working on it for 41 years. A good friend of mine named Jack Hurley out to Anderson Independent helped us get it started. It helps a lot of children at Christmas and also a lot of families at Christmas through the Brighter Christmas Fund by the, by the Foothills Foundation. It's a big deal for us. The Lord has blessed us every year for the last 20 years probably with good weather. The Lord's been good to us. He looks after us because we know he takes care of his kids too. Well, happening today, thousands of kids are going to have a happier Christmas thanks to hundreds of bikers in central Arkansas. For 37 years, the annual motorcycle parade has served to gather Christmas presents for the U.S. Marine Corps Toys for Tots. The cyclists travel today from Rodney's Cycle House south of I-30 to Toy Hill at Shackleford Crossing. We fill in a lot of blanks for kids. So kids last year, there were 9,000 kids that were served last year from the efforts of Toys for Tots, Marine Corps, Rodney Cycle House, and everybody else that gets involved, the FOP. So it's a really, really, really great event. Toys for Tots are still accepting donations. To find out how you can help, we have all that information on our website for you, fox16.com. Well, as you can see, even the banditos were there. I guess maybe the narrative's wrong that the news puts out because they're out there helping everyone as well. Good stuff, guys. And uh, congrats for uh, that member of Shadow Warriors Motorcycle Club recovering from COVID. Now we go into the main story, and that one is on the Pagans. Presented new video showing the moments leading up to a severe beating of a man. Police say he was attacked by members of the Pagan Motorcycles Club. And a trial of two alleged attackers started today. One doctor said the victim was hurt so badly, he'll never be the same again. Channel 11's Kara Safida was in court today, and she joins us live now with more on this. And Kara, prosecutors are driving home just how brutal the attack was. David, day one of this trial just wrapped up. In fact, jurors left about 20 minutes ago. Today, multiple witnesses took the stand who were at the bar the night of this alleged attack, saying they thought the victim had died from an attack that lasted less than 60 seconds. 
Five of the suspects in the case pleaded guilty. Today, the remaining two went to trial, Matthew Vasquez and Joseph Olinsky. Police say the seven suspects entered the Charleroi Slovak Club in a single file line and attacked a former member who was sitting at the bar. In today's opening statements, prosecutors told the jury the pagan motorcycle gang are outlaws in society who use outlaw justice, angry at a former member for leaving their club and joining another, telling jurors it was seven members who attacked one 54-year-old man drinking a beer in a bar with his wife, saying they, quote, stomped his brain. The first to testify, the ER surgeon the night of the attack, saying the victim suffered permanent damage and will never be the same again. He said he was unresponsive with blood on the brain and a face full of broken bones from eye sockets to cheekbones, and without medical care, he would have died. I represent one person uh, who has a story to tell and is adamant that uh, this was not some grand conspiracy. Vasquez's defense attorney argues his client is seen on video throwing just one punch and doesn't want the pagan gang reputation to sway jurors. He told jurors today Vasquez was a hard-working single father who joined the club for the brotherhood, friendships, and charitable rides and never intended to cause bodily harm to the victim. One punch brought him here and he's lost a great deal because of that. Um, he certainly didn't intend for this individual to get injured like that. And Joseph Joseph Alinsky's defense attorney told jurors this was a bar crawl that ended in a bar brawl. She says video will show her client was one of the first to walk back out the door and did not conspire, hit, or kick. Now, this trial is expected to last about a week. The victim will not be attending. I'm told he physically cannot because of the extent of his injuries. Live tonight. Okay, that one going out. I missed that uh, marker there with that damn microphone. Uh, it's like I'm crossed over, hitting all these buttons. Anyway, you heard it right there. Uh, they're worried about the club's reputation being brought into the trial. That's something that happy, happened with Freddie. They will use that. You already know they're going to use that, and they're going to use it further to hurt the club. I know that's what's coming. That's the way they always do crap. Uh, anyway, we're going to go to this sad story right here. 21 WFMJ, father of four killed in Warren motorcycle crash. According to his obituary, Mason was a member of the Outlaws Motorcycle Club and had a master's degree in English literature. Yes. These clubs do have lawyers, doctors, professionals, college graduates. It's not like the media portrays them. Hopefully you understand that. Uh, the Trumbull County Coroner says that 52-year-old Roy Mason of Warren died because of multiple fatal blunt force injuries to his head, neck, and chest and this was a motorcycle accident according to 911 reports mason's motorcycle was struck by a white suv at east market street and laird avenue northeast just after 4 p.m last thursday initial reports say the suv fled the scene <laughs> As of this ride and warn, traffic investigators were still uh, working on the crash report. Uh, he was a father of four. That's messed up. Another one. SUV. Hit and run. I wonder what they're going to charge him with. Ridiculous. Now, this Hot Cars article... It seems like Hot Cars always comes out with something when there's major news happening in the biker scene, or more specifically, the club scene. We're going to be covering this in the second half of the show, real in depth, so make sure you listen on this one. Sad state of affairs, man. Uh, according to them, the 10 ridiculous rules American motorcycle clubs still follow. And this kind of gives you a real in-depth look at just how bad regular citizens are and how ignorant they are when it comes to clubs. It's 
staunch about gender, color, and ethnicity. Always playing that race card, ain't these people? Always worried about the sexism. American motorcycle clubs have crazy hazing rituals. I don't know. Are they just as crazy as these college initiations and the frats? I don't know. Only certain motorcycle clubs will do. Yeah, they got a picture of Sons of Anarchy. You're an idiot. Uh, American motorcycle clubs have rules about riding time. Most are very tough to get into. Like I said, we're going to be covering a lot of this in the second half of the show. And members of American Motorcycle Clubs respect their colors. You're, you're a schmuck. You really are. You're a schmuck. That's all I can tell you. This out uh, overseas in Oz. Yes, we've been putting more Oz news on because a lot of listeners are from Oz. And uh, they appreciate that stuff. So we're covering them as well. Uh, 99 guns were taken from alleged gang members and associates by its national anti-gang squads uh, in 2020 and 2021. That is up from 51 firearms seized over the previous 12 months. And it just looks like regular rifles, man. It's I feel for you guys over there with your gun laws. More than 3.6 million in suspected crime proceeds was confiscated compared to to 1.6 million in 2020 while the 231 charges laid by the squad was a 35 percent increase the firearms haul included concealable loaded handguns military grade automatic firearms they're probably semis capable of firing several rounds a second uh quote many of the weapons were found loaded and easily accessible to offenders increasing the dangers to the police and the public well, there that is right there. <laughs> I told you, that's why they do this type of stuff is to increase their budgets. <sighs> it is suspected they were stockpiled for the Comancheros. So, again, you got uh, that right there. Trying to pad their budgets is what it is. It's always about that with these people, man. It really is. A former Kempner police officer is behind bars in South Texas tonight after using a state background check program for off-the-job reasons. At least that is what an arrest warrant indicates. 25 News reporter Jarrell Baker has more. Todd Kempner police say that the former police officer, Andrew Souter, was arrested in Hidalgo County this morning by a U.S. Marshals Task Force. Interim Kempner Police Chief Heriberto Rodriguez says that Souter is being held at the Hidalgo County Jail. Chief Rodriguez says they discovered the misconduct during a routine internal investigation, which is routine when a new police chief takes over. We were reviewing some, some files that we have and some records that we keep, uh, we just, just, we saw the discrepancy. An arrest warrant says Souter used a criminal background database to do a background check on his one-time roommate. The Alpha David says when confronted, the former cop denied it, but there was an electronic trail. Mayor John Wilkerson says this proves their city takes all crime seriously and no one is above the law. I don't care if it's a police officer, I don't care if it's city staff, an elected official. Uh, if, if an allegation is made against me, our police department has full access to conduct a thorough investigation and hold those accountable if they violated the law. Okay, final thoughts on this one. That last story in Australia, that's the kind of stuff I was talking about, how they parade around everything that they've accomplished because what that does is give them more into their budget to further harass your ass. That's what it really does. And they do that here in the United States as well. So remember that every time you hear the media calling them gangs or 
every time they think a couple people represent an entire club that is what they're doing the police are using the media for that purpose for that purpose in the beginning a lot of good stuff happened and a lot of toy runs and that one club member recovering from covid everybody takes care of their own within the biker community and these schlucks don't understand that kind of stuff and it upsets them when people are quiet about it uh we also send out our condolences to the outlaws motorcycle club on the loss of their brother and make sure you guys go over to the second half of the show check us out on roku and fire tv all that good stuff. We'll see you over there for the second half of the show. To the extent that pending criminal matters are discussed on this website or YouTube channel, all such charges are merely accusations and all defendants are presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty in a court of law.